Hello everyone. So earlier session we had used Google login to secure our microservices. But you see there is a problem here. The client ID and client secret are confidential and we should not keep it directly in our application.yml file. We should hide it somewhere and from there our application should use it and this is exactly what we do in a production grade code. So today I shall show you how we can use HashiCloud Vault and we can keep this client ID and client secret in the HashiCloud Vault and from there we can use it. So for that purpose, let's start the coding. And anyway, these secrets and all I shall delete before the time uh, application is or I shall upload the video. So let's start and let's try to integrate install HashiCloud. So first of all, we go here. Let's go here and from here, you will find this is the link I shall put the link in the video descriptions from there we need to run brew install hashicrop so let sorry brew install vault so let me run it here in case you don't have brew in your machine please install and you can install the vault after that so this is how we can do it in the mac by this time it is running let me show you in case if you are using windows machines you can follow here and you can install your file or you can also there is a zip file you can download that one and unzip it and set the environment variable it will work for you so that's the thing and let me see if yeah the vault is installed in case you get some error brew will give you what is this error and you may need to give some write or read permission to user bean and all these things so here my vault is installed now let me run the For that, I need to run vault server minus dev. So let me run. This is in development mode. So it is started. And just note down this root token. And uh, that's it. That's the only thing we need to note down. Now let me go to our application. And here we need to add few dependencies. So let's see what are those dependencies and we need to make some configuration changes. So let me come here and I already kept those dependencies handy to save some time. So let me check here. So this is the dependency and since it is coming from Spring Cloud, because of this reason, I need to add a dependency management. Please refer my microservice uh, videos for microservice playlist. There you will find I explain why we need the dependency management and what is the purpose of all this. And I need to add a Spring Cloud version. So let me quickly take it and here let me add the screen cloud version for me so this is fine and let me take one more thing just to get a better visibility what is our properties and all these things we use it uh screen Boot actuator so that's it that's the change now we go here and we need to create okay we need to use bootstrap so i need another dependency 
this bootstrap. Okay. Let me refresh it. Now we go here and I need to create a new class. Sorry. Bootstrap dot. This is a new configuration file we need to create. And just let me add it. In the bootstrap, I need to give few things. So I explained the bootstrap in, if you refer my videos earlier in the config server that I discussed in our microservice playlist. In the config server video, if you check, you will find I explained what is the purpose of bootstrap, why we are using and all these things. So here we give something. Spring uh, dot spring color say application name and I am giving things on um, social login just give it a name uh, and then here we need to give few things cloud and Vault, then we need to give URI, which is nothing but local port. Oh, sorry, will be HTTP 8200, the port number, and then we need to give token. Where from I get the token? This token is showing. So I need to copy this token. So let me copy this token and paste it here. Save it. And for the screen boards actuator we used, for that few dependencies we need to add to enable certain endpoints. But this is not related to HashiCorp call. This is just I want to see some more visibility what are the properties we set in our application to provide ML and all because of that. So, but this is not without this also you can do if you don't want Twitter, don't add this. This is okay, this is fine. Now let's go to our application And instead of that, let me copy this thing somewhere. Just like that. This is one thing. This is my client set. So let me keep it here. Now, what happened? Let me remove this one completely from here and I shall give dollar. And what name I can give? Jam Google. Client. Okay. And this one I shall give. Google client secret. Okay, these are the two things uh, I'm giving here. Let's save it now. Where from our application we read these these two things? For that we already started our HashiCorp server, and if you can see, it is running in eight two zero zero. So let me go here and. Here I give eight two zero zero nine. Here is a token, and what is the token? Token is the same one what we just copied, or just take this token. Copy. Let me name application seven. Let me copy it here and sign. So here. Yeah. Now, by default, by default, our Spring Boot, uh, Spring Vault config or Spring Boot application will look into the properties in the secret, this new engine. So, let's go into the secret and here we create a new secret. So, here the path name we should give as application. These are the default things that we have to give to work with Spring Boot. We can override this thing, but since this is not a HashiCorp session, so I'm not going to this, going with the default, but definitely in a next video, I shall show you how we can update those things. 
Now, what is the key? Key we need to take it from here. G client ID. Let me copy, paste it here. What is the value? Oh, this is the client ID. I hope I paste it here. Let's see if it is correct. Add next one. What is client secret? Let me copy and let me go here. G client secret and what is the client secret? Let me copy it from here. If you refer my Google uh, log sign in with social media login with Google and or tool that I uploaded just few days back, you will know how to get the Google client ID and client secret. So let me save it. So these videos are just continuation. So if you just start watching this video, you may not get it. So you need to look into our previous videos. Okay. So uh, that is fine. We saved it correctly. Now I think I'm done here. And my job is done here. So let me see. Let's build our application and it should work fine. Test. Again, I'm telling we should not skip test and we should write JUnit, but this is uh, not a JUnit session, so not. So I just keep the just ensure that you should keep our focus on the code. So it is uh, started correctly. Let me run my retail bank applications, and it should work. Okay, let me make one small change. Sorry, sorry, guys. So what happened? I use this uh, actuator and if I need to check what properties are set for client ID and client secret, I need to do it with actuator and because of that, I need to uh, enable actuator environment. So I just uh, kept it in some place. I just copy it here. So basically what I'm telling that for anything with the base root, you allow anything with actuator environment, you allow without any security login. Any other thing you authenticate and do port to login. So that's the thing. So I just make sure actuator ENB bypass the security. That's the thing. I just for simplicity, if you don't do this, you need to do it to Google login and all. That's the only thing. So let's, uh, shall I build it? Yeah, it's better to build it again, though it is not necessary, but uh, I personally prefer to build it again. But it does not make much sense because anyway, when you run this, it will build. So let me run the application now. And when I run my application, let me see it is working. Yes, it works perfectly. Now let's take a new Ignito window and here we give not before Ignito window. Let me show you in the new window only. Localhost our port number is nine zero zero four slash and here we search for this particular property. What is this? Just see registration. And what is this registration value? You can see this. It gets this one. Our Google secret, Google ID, client ID, and the client secret. Client secret it will show as a star. It will not show it here. But you see, I didn't set any value here. Here I just set the variables and all the values are coming from my vault. All the values are coming from my vault. So this, this. Okay. So when I give somebody the binary files and all or deploy someone, they will not know what is this value because it is secured in the vault. Okay. Now let's see how the application is working. Let me take as Ignito window, end of the day, application should work. Localhost, 
let me give 9004 and give parents and you can see it's working okay next and here I give hopefully this is the password yes let me check my mobile and stop duplicate it and you can see we are able to log in and we are able to see our balance and all this thing. So this is exactly the same the way our once we did the Google authentication is working the same way Google authentication is working but what we did now we have not mentioned our client ID and client secret here instead of that we kept it in a HashiCorp vault and from there we are accessing through our application. So just recap what we did we have added the uh, uh, spring cloud vault config that's the key dependency actuator is not related but I just had to see the properties and definitely the bootstrap because we need to uh, do the configurations for vault in the bootstrap network. If you do this in the application it will not work. So we do it in the bootstrap we tell that this is our vault URL and this is the token and where from we get the token we get the token once we start the server. So that's the thing what is the command command is vault server start and you can do this thing how to install you can install it through the command brew install in uh, Mac and for windows and all you just go here and you see these links you can do it on your own basically you need to download the jar and from from there you need to set some environment variables and all these things it, it will work the same way as it is working here and after that we go to the application RML, we set those properties this property value name here and with this we created in our in our vault we created these properties and given the value and that has to be created in secrets within this within this applications within this we need to add the value then it will work so maybe in the upcoming session i shall show you how we can uh, this is the default location where the Spring uh, uh, Spring Cloud uh, Vault is looking for the values, but uh, uh, maybe I can create another video soon. Uh, there I should show you how we can override those values. Also. So that's for today. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and definitely comment on that. And uh, if you have facing any difficulties or anything please let me know i shall definitely respond back to you guys thank you and let's meet in the next sessions